So uh, here we go. We're going to build a really big drum. Not the biggest one I've ever made, but it is a replica of the biggest one I've ever made. So in 2012, I got this strange phone call from a gentleman, and he said he was with the Kansas City Chiefs. So this led into me actually building a five and a half foot diameter uh, big drum that is now the Kansas City Chiefs drum. So if you ever watch a game where it's a home game for the Kansas City Chiefs, then they do the tomahawk chop at the beginning of the game and they get the whole uh, crowd doing it, you know, and they play this giant drum at, at all their home games. So I got a recent request from a gentleman who owns a sports bar and he wanted a replica of it to play at the sports bar along with the one on the screen. Not what I was expecting, but I was like, you know what? I haven't built a drum in a long time, so let's give it a shot. So I bought a bunch of 2x4s and I've already planed these down to one inch. And then this cardboard box you see here has two uh, African cowhides in it that should be big enough to make the heads. Uh, I am not going to show you every single cut of this drum. Uh, I'm going to, like, like, like I said, I'm already playing these off camera. And I'm going to cut the uh, pieces and then when I get to the table saw to start beveling them, then I'm going to do a little bit more explaining and show you some more of it. But for the most part, this is going to be more about the technicalities of building this thing because I really want to encourage some other people to learn to build these things. Uh, there's not a lot of people that, well, I say there's not a lot. There are a lot. I mean, I'm, I belong to drum building uh, groups on Facebook and there's a lot of drum builders out there, uh, but they don't get to share their information except across that group. Uh, I'm gonna share it to the wider public and hopefully somebody will get interested in building drums and find a, a, a new niche for themselves. So, because I don't really do it anymore. I'm just, I don't know, after 30 years of it, I'm pretty burnt out on it. <laughs> but I'm gonna build this one because it was an interesting enough conversation. The gentleman's name is Jeff and uh, he was a super nice guy. Uh, we had a great conversation on the phone, and uh, so I haven't even met him yet, but uh, gonna build it and see what we get. So here we go. My next prep, next step is going to be taking these and cutting them into 16 inch lengths, and then I'll be setting up the table saw and we'll uh, bevel the edges. And when I get to that part, I'm gonna like come back on camera and explain to you exactly what is going on so that you can figure it out if you decide to build one, all right? All right, here we go. Okay, a little bit of an explanation here. So, of course, the drum is round like this, and this is divided into 36 sections here. Uh, I just had to go ahead and just do the whole drawing for you. The drum is going to be 36 inches in diameter. So that leads us to the math. It's got 36 sides, it's 36 inches in diameter. 36 inches times pi means the circumference is 113 and 1 eighth. Now we're going to divide that by the 36 sides and we get 3 and an eighth. So we know how wide the sides need to be on the outside, not, not the inside, just the outside. Okay? Now, 360 degrees divided by 36 means 10 degrees at each joint. But that doesn't mean you cut 10 degree angles on them because then you're only going to get 18 sides. They actually have to be cut 5 degrees because each joint is 10 degrees. So you get 5 from one piece and 5 from the other piece and that makes your 10 degrees. So that's what we're going to do next is we're going to jump over on the table saw and I'm going to show you how to set the blade and everything and uh, you've got to be as accurate as possible with these. Uh, I have an angle uh, finder for the table saw that uh, will, will get me nice and digitally dialed in and then uh, we'll get the pieces cut and we're going to go on to assembly. Alright, here we go. Okay, so the first thing we got to do is make sure that our blade is at 90 degrees to the table. And that's off just a smidge. Let me loosen things up a little here. Okay, there we go. So we got our blade at 90 degrees. And then this is a digital angle finder. Turn it on. We're gonna attach it to the blade. Also helps if you run the blade all the way up. Okay, so you see right now it's not quite showing 90, so we're gonna zero it. Zero. 
There we go. Now we're zeroed out. Can you see that? Well, let's see here. Can I get this any shorter? Hang on a second. I'm going to readjust the camera so you can see that better. Okay, that's better. So now I'm going to unlock my tilt and it's going to fall right over. <laughs> we want to get this at five degrees. And then lock it in. And of course it's going to go crazy after I bump the, every time I bump this table. There is a little bit of a delay in there, in there. Well, come on now. I'm going to call that good enough because really <clears throat> if they're a little bit proud on the outside that's actually better because then you're it, it'll work it'll work so now I get around all my pieces through there at the uh, three and an eighth actually what I'm going to do is set this about like three and a quarter and run one side of all of them and then I'll set it for three and an eighth and then run the other side of all of them and let me do that Okay, one of the things I forgot to mention there is you want to make sure that you're measuring at the top of the board for your distance, not down here, or you're going to have two wide pieces. So this is three and a half. What I'm going to do is I'm going to set that up there and run my tape right across to that, and we're going to set it to three and a quarter. And we can load that blade back now because I really don't like having it that high. I'm not going to sit here and make you watch me do that 41 times because that's how many pieces I'm making even though it only has 36 sides. I always make extra in case some of them are messed up. Anyway, so I'm going to cut all of one side and then I'll show you the reset for the other side and then we'll go from there. So I got one side of all of them cut. Now I'm going to flip around and cut the other side. First I got to set this to the three and an eighth that we're going to need for the actual sides. There it is. Now I'm going to go ahead and cut a couple of these and show you how they fit together and how it starts to curve and you'll see how it becomes a nice big round thing. It's going to have, of course, angles, but those will get sanded down and by the time we're all done, it'll look pretty round. I will add that the actual Kansas City drum was built on a frame that was uh, Kansas City Chiefs drum, excuse me was actually built on a frame that was a cattle tank. It was a custom ordered cattle tank that was uh, five and a half feet in diameter. And then they cut the bottom out and put a garden hose uh, on the edge. And then I had to foam the inside of it. So it, it actually isn't wood like this, but it's a lot easier to do this than it is to go out and buy another cattle tank, which I can get a three footer, but decided I'd just go for this. Anyway, let's get these cut. slight curve to it and as I add more pieces of course they'll come around and meet on the other side. So I'm going to get all those cut and then we'll come back because I'm not going to bore you with a whole bunch of boards going across the table saw. <laughs> size and now we're going to start prepping for glue up now if this was like a piece that was going to go on a lathe or something I would actually smooth off each side of these I'd, I'd set the joiner at five degrees and, and run every one of them on both sides 
but it's not going to be on the lathe. So I'm not afraid of, of, uh, of it falling apart uh, because of torque. So I'm just going to leave my saw blade as the saw blade finish as my uh, glue up, and I think I'll be fine. Now we know that uh, when you put all these together, you get 113 and uh, what was it, 113 and an eighth in length. My bench here is only six feet long, <laughs> so that's not going to get all laid out in one piece. Uh, so I'm going to do 18 pieces and then another one of 18 pieces and get them all taped up and then tape the two pieces together on the floor and do the glue up that way. Oh, this is a big project, man. <laughs> Why do I let myself get into these things? Uh, and I cut extras because I knew I was going to reject some pieces. Uh, this one might get used, depends on how many rejects I have. Um, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. Tape stick to it a lot better if it's free of dust. So some people actually tape the, each seam individually. I've found that putting about four pieces down the whole length actually works pretty good. You do get a little more glue squeeze out that way, but that's all right. Outside of it's gonna be all seam done anyway. This thing is getting painted too. That's why I'm using two by fours instead of like oak or walnut or something like that, which I have enough to do this with as materials, but so now we can see, maybe, the fun part is always lifting them up the first time. Oh, let me get a board, hold on. Yeah, here we go. So if you take a board underneath it, stand it up, it makes things a lot easier. Now, technically, when we pull these around, we should get a half circle. By golly, that's just right at a half a circle. Okay, got them on the floor here, and I taped the two of them together where you see the blue tape there, I ran out of the green tape. Of course, you know, I wasted a bunch of it, but you know, shit happens. Uh, now, I'm gonna flip the thing over. I've got two boards underneath of it because I don't have one long enough to do it all at once. It'll be about almost 10 feet, right? Over. Here we go. Oh boy, that's a big piece of wood. I'm assuming you can see how that's going to work as that side comes up. Bam over. Except actually to roll it up, I'll hopefully I'm going to have this sitting on the other side there. And I'll lift it up with those and then roll the two sides together. Put my band clamps around it and clamp it down. And yeah. These big ones are a pain, man. Last time I did a 36 inch drum, that one was six feet long and 36 inches at the head, and it was like 18 inches at the tail. It was a uh, cone shaped. Uh, last time I did one of those, I made it in two halves because I had 28 inch doors on my house and I couldn't work on it in the house unless I built it in two halves. So that's been many, many, many years ago, but. <laughs> All right, well, I'm gonna to have to actually go and get some materials. I've got glue, but I don't have any good uh, chip brushes to brush it into the cracks with, and that works best. So I'm gonna to have to go get some chip brushes, and then uh, we'll get back here and get this sucker glued up. See you in a bit.
coats of clear coat on it now uh, I did round over the inside too I didn't show that in the video so I wanted to show that and then uh, we got our red paint and our clear coat on it and uh, looking pretty sharp so this video is getting kind of long so I am going to edit this together and get it up and on the next video we will open up that box right over there and we will cut out two heads for this thing and hopefully a whole bunch of rawhide strapping. I may have to go get more leather for that. I don't know yet. Uh, don't know how much this skin's going to be left after I cut the heads. Uh, but we'll make this strapping and 
put the heads on it and then uh, build a stand for it and then uh, well that'll probably be the end of the video I might try to get some footage of uh, when I deliver it so everybody can see how happy everybody is <laughs> we hope anyway but thanks for watching guys I will see you uh, hopefully in about a week maybe a little over a week uh, these heads are big they take time to dry fully so uh, I've got to allow for that but yeah I'm still working on it as I as I feel well enough to do so <laughs> all right have a good one we'll catch you next time Bye.